This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks NYC. I have the pleasure of having CEO and founder of Restore, Jim Donnelly. We had an opportunity to meet in person, as it should be. We're going to talk workout recovery, changing the world, one body at a time, hyper wellness, Halo. Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So, look, you got into this business kind of before it became something that's commonplace. Um, so why don't you give us your background on, on why you got involved in this, why you started it, and um, has it played out according to plan? Yeah, so I, I mean, I've been a serial entrepreneur. I sold an internet company, which kind of afforded me the ability to look around and see what I wanted to do and what I wanted to create. Six, seven years ago, I was training for a triathlon. I was 46 at the time. I was pretty beat up. A friend said, mm -hmm. hey, you ought to check out cryotherapy. So I said, sure. I went into a studio. I fell in love with cryotherapy right away, but I hated everything else about the experience. It was in a mm -hmm. bad location, crappy retail environment, overpriced. I could go on and on. And so I said, I think I can do this better. And so we went and found a Whole Food shopping center. We put a test store up. Um, it was immediately successful. Um, we lowered the price. We, like I said, we were in a better environment and people loved it. And then we went out, we opened five more stores. We AB tested. Let's make sure this isn't just a, an Austin thing. And sure enough, it worked everywhere. Um, and then we said, all right, I don't want to be a cryotherapy business only. That's not a, a real business, a protectable business. I want a big business. And mm -hmm. so we started layering on other things. So now we're, you know, 10 modalities, half medical, half non-medical. Um, we've created a national infrastructure. We, we, we do it better than anybody else. We manufacture our own equipment. You know, we're, we're super excited about our place as the leader in this space. And our mission is to make hyper wellness affordable and accessible for more people so they can do what they love to do. And, um, you know, we'll open a store every three to four days this month. And that's kind of the that's trajectory awesome. that we've, we, you know, we've always had, and, and, you know, we're up to 165 locations around the country now. So, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in the audience here that are looking for a new concept that might already be in and around the halo sector. They might have a, own a European wax. They might own a orange theory, a you know, gold's gym, EOS, what, what have you. Um, and they're seeing, obviously, a lot of dollars that their members are willing to spend on cryo, on infrared sauna, on, you know, any kind of stretching and so on and so forth. And also, obviously, you know, some of the hormone shots that you can get and IV drips. Um, do you see your solution as a great opportunity for someone to replicate what you've done on their own without just kind of buying some equipment and thinking that they're, now branded in in the business of workout recovery how do you talk to someone who's got another similar type of business and say hey look you can actually own the fitness side of your community and now you can own the hyper wellness side of your community instead of trying to yeah, like yeah. put a couple of machines inside of what you're currently doing it's it's what we do is definitely complementary from a recovery and performance perspective i will say that uh, no i do own some health clubs i own a very high-end health club in charlotte called the charlotte athletic club i put um crowd therapy machines in that club i did not find it to be particularly impactful from a business perspective it was a nice addition to the club but crowd therapy machines alone in a club aren't, aren't a real business and, and mm -hmm. they're never going to be your priority and so I do think it's better for there to be a standalone solution that's not inside your club. We do work with many high-level European wax, private equity back groups, um, Orange Theory, you name it. We work with folks that have those businesses and they've come into the Restore family. It's hard. Every one of them will tell you that they came in probably a little cocky. I've opened 30 Orange Theories. I know how to do this. I know how to do pre-sales. But they're coming into an environment that's different. It's a it's a medical environment, and the medical mm -hmm. uh, dynamic is incredibly complex. There's corporate practice of medicine issues that's hard to deal with. I mean, literally, your point of sale system has to do things differently to be legally mm -hmm. compliant. I'm um, ordering supplies, dealing with the regulatory environment, and and the problem with the United States is 50 states are like 50 countries. They're all completely <laughs> different. 
from a regulatory environment. So I, I am a big believer in you need to find the right partner. You need to find someone that has figured out those issues. You know, we have 200 people in our corporate headquarters that support our franchisees. That's more people in the corporate headquarters of European Wax or Orange Theory. And, and part of that's the complexity of this business. Mm. Part of that is we always say we're going to where the puck's going, not where the puck is. And so we're so, uh, supporting the growth and supporting the franchisees in, in a pretty big way. You know, two things just to, to bring up to, to our audience here. Sometimes people hem and haw about, Oh, I've got to pay 5%, 6%, 7% royalty. And I, I remind them, you're basically renting a 200 person corporate overhead for like 70 grand, right? So there's like $10 million of corporate overhead and you get it for 70 grand. I mean, 200 people are waking up trying to better the business on your behalf for, a, you know, a fraction of the cost. So that's how I respond to the royalty conversation um, and the amount of support you actually get. Um, when you started doing, franchising you know obviously this was your baby it came out of your frustration you know you kind of curated it to how you would want it to be what kind of allowed you to kind of cross the chasm if you will and say okay i'm willing to let somebody else run this brand you know as a franchisee franchise or relationship not just the financial benefits of it but also hey now i've got you kind of have like two two levels of clients or customers or members yeah uh, yeah, yeah, you know, a, a few things. Number one, the complexity of the business and the regulated dynamic of it create really clear guardrails. Um, you got to follow the playbook in this business more than any other business um, in the fitness business. So that gives us the ability to make sure people stay on the right right, right path. Um, number two, we do have scale. Scale matters. We do more IVs than any hospital system in the country, huh. minus maybe HCA and, and one sure. We, we do more IVs than Johns Hopkins. And so when you're buying that many supplies, for instance, in the medical space, what we pay is very different. So when you start talking about a 7% royalty, it's not just the support, it's the scale. It's the fact that we manufacture our own equipment that's better than other equipment. I could go on and on. And then finally, we, we have been super selective about our franchisees. Um, so when we first started, you had to be a military academy grad to be a franchise oh, wow, wow. system. Naval Academy, West Point primarily. Then we added sort of high level sales execs from only the blue chip medical device companies, Stryker, um, Medtronics, J&J, Abbott, you know, people in sales, high level, understood sort of the medical dynamic um, a little better. Then we added the top operators for systems like Orange Theory and European Wax. Um, and now, you know, a lot of private equity back groups have come in. And then finally, we, we have sort of a catch all fourth group. But if we had started with a catch all, it would have been a very different foundation. So now we have a, a, an incredibly talented group of franchisees that understand the big picture. They understand the support. They understand why scale matters. And mm -hmm. um, I will say this. When you have the success we're having, it's a lot easier to keep people on the same playbook um, than if you had a system that had problems. Yeah. So, you know, to, obviously it's been six, seven years since, since you started this and there's been explosive growth. But could you kind of give us a little insight into times during that, that period where you said, hey, I got to pause for a second. I got to take a quick time out and I got to fix something. And then I'm going to keep moving forward because I think a lot of entrepreneurs, one, don't take a time out. Don't say like, hey, I got a unit economic issue. I got a manufacturing product issue. I got a sales issue. Let's stop, fix it, and then let's keep moving. So how have you kind of conditioned your team and yourself to say, you know, one, we're not going to say yes all the time. Like, yeah, I could have sold a thousand franchises, but, you know, we'd be fielding calls from the wrong people at the wrong time that don't understand what we're doing. Yeah. Well, well one thing I will say is, is we have – sold over, you know, close to approaching 700 um, locations now. So we have 700 locations on the development schedule. So when you have that and you have 
um, all the other ingredients in place, it does make it easier. So what are those ingredients? Um, number one, we did go out and get a $140 million investment from General Atlantic. General Atlantic is, if not the top one, of, certainly one of the top growth equity funds in the sure. country. So they made a minority investment in Restore, and that provides validation to anyone in the space that wants to know who the right guys to partner with are, look for the guys that GA makes a big investment on. That's that's number one. Number two, we have an incredible team. I have a co-founder, Steve Welch. You know, we're we're partners in this. Um, he he has an, an amazing background. I have an amazing background. It allows us to get twice as much done. We have a world class leadership team, um, and so I, I say my superpower is I'm self aware. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. We brought in a full team of, of blue class or blue, blue chip pedigreed folks, um, and the, and then we do have. Um, resources that allow us to stop and, and take advantage of opportunities. And, and the one that I do highlight is the equipment manufacturing. We were buying craft therapy machines from other manufacturers. They looked like they were one bad month away from going bankrupt. Their machines weren't aesthetically mm. pretty. They, they didn't have the efficacy that we wanted because the cold was inconsistent. So we said we can do better. And, and once again, Steve has a manufacturing background. We now have a facility that manufactures the most um, attractive, the most efficacious cryotherapy machines in the world. And we're super proud of that. And now we control our supply dynamic. And so right. all the supply chain issues, we deal with them and we control our destiny. Whereas before we, we didn't. And, and when you're cranking out a location every four days or so, um, you got to control the key inputs. And that was one of the key inputs. So, so that there, there wasn't so much a pause there. It was more an, an example of we saw an opportunity. It was a strategic issue and we have the resources and the expertise to go and make those things happen. You know, yep. entre the, my favorite saying to entrepreneurs is a lack of options provides clarity. And so a lot of small entrepreneurs you really don't have a lot of options. Sometimes you got to sort of build and build and build and, and more options become available to you. The nice thing about restore is, is you know, from a capital perspective, from a talent perspective, um, from a recognition category awareness perspective, we, you know, we are the leader. We, we can do a lot more um, than the folks we're, we're in the, in the category with. Yeah, I just want to make a point on what you said about the cryo and saying, look, I need to manufacture this and control my own destiny. If you were talking to an investment banker, you know, which I am part of some of the time, I would say, hey, Jim, you're not you're in the franchising business. It's a royalty play. You know, I want you to only have one corporate location. I don't want you to own any manufacturing. I got CapEx involved in that. And yeah, then yeah. you say, look, take your financial hat off. And let me just tell you how, like, the real world runs. And I can't have a bottleneck in my manufacturing, therefore it's an integral part of the business. I don't care, Pete, if you're talking to me, you know, what you think like the market wants to hear or an equity analyst wants to hear, like this is how I need to run my business. So like when you bring in a private equity firm, a lot of them actually understand that and say, hey, I do want to vertically integrate to an extent. Obviously I don't want to like create a flooring company just for a restore, but talk about how like your experience allows you to have those conversations and your team allows you to say, hey, look, forget about what the near term like valuation, you know, uh, you know, uh, attitude might be like this. We're building a, a billion dollar business here and this is what I need. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say we do look at, you, you know, returns on the investments we make. We do look at a lot of things. Um, but I, I will say we tend to make investments where we have an imbalance of information. So we know more than anyone else out there about what the opportunity looks like, what the upside is, what the challenges are. And then we run that through a filter of, is this the best way for us to spend our money? Is it strategic? Is it essential? Um, and then those are the things we focus on. So we, we don't throw money at every problem. We do we want to make sure we're putting money in the best places. And, and we do have a, a fantastic partner. We, you know, going back to General Atlantic, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, minority yeah. investor. Um, so we, we, you know, we do control the dynamic. Having said that, we never treat them that way. And they have incredible right, resources. Right. They, they're very thoughtful. They push us. They, they make, they, they play the devil's advocate role, but it's always, always, always has been and will be a, 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 a good 
partnership and we treat them like full partners. And, and I think they really appreciate that. But but we, we do have to run it through a process. We do have to run it through, a, you know, some kind of, of of filter that says this is the right investment to make. And sometimes sure, sure. that is, well, if we were to spend that money on something else, what would it be? And if it's if there isn't something better to spend it on, that also helps you kind of figure out. Yeah. What yeah. I mean, I some, mean some, some entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs will always say, well, why don't I don't want to tell anybody, anybody tell me what, what to do. do. I, don't, I, don't, I don't need another, another voice in the room. room. And you get into this position, position where somebody, somebody like, like a general, general Atlantic, Atlantic, we know well and have a lot of respect for, you know, they've run this play in different franchise operations. So the amount of information you can absorb from, from that, that and actually, and actually get, them get them to tell you a story. story. Like I'm a, I'm a, I, 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 I view myself, myself as more of like a storyteller story than, than I am. Like, like let me tell, let me tell you why you need to do this. Like, let me tell you a story of a, of a company, company that did this, this that I was, that I was watching, watching this movie, movie and let me, let me tell you how the movie ended. You decided to think times have changed or are you just going to replay the same movie? Yeah, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell you how that ends. <laughs> like folks like GA, they're really good at pattern recognition. Number one, um, we had some criteria we were looking for. We wanted um, someone who'd invested in category creation. They clearly have done that again and again. And the franchise experience certainly helps. I mean, obviously, European Wax and and several others are you know scaled national franchise systems. And they have amazing resources. And anytime we need those resources, all we got to do is pick up the phone and they, they, they come running. And we, we really appreciate that. But, but I, I will say they also appreciate the fact that we are entrepreneurs who've been successful, not just this time, but in previous times. I would say entrepreneurship isn't something you wake up um, with that skill without putting in the work. You know, I had a long corporate career. I've done other entrepreneurial ventures. I've, I've had other success. I would say I'm a much, much better leader. I'm a much, much better entrepreneur today because of all of those things, including some of the failures. Um, and, and, and I would say, once again, my, my, my superpower is that I'm, I'm self-aware. I'm pretty egoless. And I love bringing in mm -hmm. great people to help me. My, my partner, Steve, couldn't, you know, we're fantastic friends. We don't have arguments. We have discussions. Um, we we, we kind of focus on things that are different. So we're not stepping on each other all the time. And and it's allowed us to get a lot more done. And, and, and once again, we could have raised money from a hundred different places, but you know, to to shy away from the the best places because you're afraid of someone trying to tell you what to do, that's a recipe for for failure. In yeah, 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 yeah. Agreed. Agreed. You know, one, yeah, of, one the of the things, things that, that I've learned, learned about, about how you run, you run your, your business, business just that from people, people that are in and around, around your, your network, network is you're, you're very, very transparent, transparent about providing, about providing data, data to the, the franchisees, franchisees about, about how they're, how they're doing. doing Versus, versus others, others and, and giving them the ability, ability to, really to really share information, information and figure, figure out, out like, hey, what's the special, special sauce? sauce? Or did, did you figure, figure out something, something else that, you know, is working, working in your local market, market that, that we can basically, basically try, try to optimize, optimize the entire, entire network? network. I, 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 I had, had one, one on the chain of Dunkin' Donuts, Donuts as an example, example for people to hear the difference, difference where, where they would come down and they would basically, basically like, like have a meeting with you once a year and tell you, tell you why you're not, not generating, generating enough, enough revenue, revenue in your, in your local, local market because they're, they're trying, trying to get a percentage, percentage of your royalties yeah. back, back up to them, to them for their, for their public, public company quarterly. And they would, you know, say, well, you should, what, what, you know, like, oh, I mean, somebody else is doing this, but oh, we can't share that information with you. Like, we can't share What's the point? You come down here, if you can't tell me what's working in the markets, where it seems like, like the, way the way you present, present the business, the business is, is not only are you getting, getting this territory, and you're going to have this multi-unit arrangement, but I'm going to tell you everything that's going on that's going to help you further your business, and not just going to be from me. You know, you know, and my, my team, team or a person team, 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 everybody. Yeah. Well, I, I will tell you the first filter we have for any decision we make um, is, is it good for the franchisees? Um, does it increase their profitability? Does it benefit them? And if you don't have that mindset, I, I find it hard to understand how you'd have a long term relationship with them. You know, a franchise relationship's longer than most marriages. You know, it's a 10, 20 year relationship. So, a lot of, right. a lot of cases, we do invest a tremendous amount of money in data and technology. We will invest tens of millions of dollars in those areas. We have a chief data officer. We have a CTO and chief product officer, and they are very sophisticated. Our, our CTO came from SoulCycle and 
obviously that's a seminal brand, worked on hardware, software there, our cheap data. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm part, part of the part cult. Of the cult. Of, yeah, of that's a little, so, you know, we're, 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 we so we're super proud of that. And part of that is giving information back to the franchisees to help them run their business better. We make decisions based on data and pattern recognition. We give them dashboards and tools. We absolutely share best practices across the network. We listen to our franchisees and take their ideas. And, you know, we always say there's a process for that. You know, sure. you, you don't get to ad lib. You don't get to ad hoc. But if you have a great idea, awesome. Let us run it through the process. Let's let us test it in a few locations because we have an all or none um, philosophy. Everything we do is the same in every store. So, uh, you know, it's important for us to make the right decisions, but it's all on a foundation of data. Mm -hmm. And then talk for a minute about, you know, the, the breadth of demographic that is coming into restore versus what people may think. Like, Hey, you and I are going to do an Ironman. Okay. Let's go into a cryo tank. And then I go in there and I see like a, you know, a little kid getting, you know, going in the infrared sauna, you know, because they have the sniffles and it's like clearing out their, you know, knees. So t talk about like some of the things that you're like, wow, I didn't really know this person would show up here. Yeah, it was one of our big aha moments. We thought that this would be primarily athletic recovery and performance. That's actually about 15 to 20 percent of our business. Wow. The other 80 percent of our business is more seminal stuff that doesn't ever go away. So it's driven by things like chronic conditions. Seventy percent of Americans have a chronic condition. A lot of times that involves pain um, and, and these things that you don't have good options to solve. Um, and so the people that come to us, they've gone down the pharmaceutical route and they're looking for a different approach. But, but what, what's happened is we have a, 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 a customer base that's roughly 50, 50 male and female. The average age is a little over 40, but the more interesting thing is there's a 25 year distribution above and below that. So mm -hmm. we always say we have as many 15 year old boys as 65 year old grandmothers and everything in between. And if you think about it, every human being walking around will have a need state that Restore addresses. We're all aging, and so that's a big one. We all want more energy and vitality. We all get hurt. We all want to improve our immunity. We all get sick. Um, you know, we're a place that's about preventative health and wellness. And so mm -hmm. we address so many things that affect every human being. Um, it is actually one of our biggest challenge. How do you create marketing campaigns around a universally needed um, service? Um, you, I, I look at you and I, I could probably name eight reasons why you should come in. And those eight reasons apply to most people. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. When you... When you what, what, just, just so, so people, people understand, understand you know, look, once, once you get, you get to 700 locations, locations, the brand, the brand awareness, awareness is basically ubiquitous, right? Right. Because of the, 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 the stores, you know, in, you know, the, ground. in the ground. You also, you also and I, don't, I, don't I don't know what you got, got set, set up. up. Maybe you can tell us. us. But do you have but a co-op marketing, marketing budget, budget also, also for nationwide? nationwide. Marketing, marketing or is, that or is that on hold right, right now, right now with but the FTD? FTD? No, we have a brand fund. We'll spend many millions of dollars on on from that brand fund. And once again, there are things that we invest in. Technology is a big one, but another one is marketing. We're building a category. We're the category leader. So we spend several right, million right. dollars above the brand fund that we collect from our franchisees. Now, when we have 700 stores, we probably won't do that and won't have to do that. But when you're at 160, once again, we're, we're going to where the puck's headed. We are investing in category creation and marketing that, 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 that needs to happen. And, and then what's happening is you're starting to get cities like Denver where, where you wake up and now, okay, now we've got 12 locations. Like we're all over the market and we're on yeah. the path to 40 locations in Denver. And so you can do all kinds of interesting marketing because of that density and because of, because of that scale on a local level as well as a national level. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, some people come and say, well, I don't understand the Planet Fitness model. I don't understand the Orange Theory or Massage. I mean, you say, well, Look, you're watching an NFL game or you're watching a college football game at 8 o'clock on a Saturday and there's a Planet Fitness logo, you know, that's the power of being part of a network that has the kind of ad spend or Dunkin' Donuts, you know, 
they, they take five five percent of revenue, yeah. and that's why they have to spend it. So you're going to see a Dunkin' ad at least five times a day. So I think people who are considering franchises need to see, as you say, where the puck is going, but also like the incremental dollars that are yeah, going to yeah. be spent on your behalf because of the network effect and things that you can do marketing that nobody else actually has the, 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 the funds to do. There's no one else in our space that, that, that we look at that's spending the amount of money we're spending on marketing. And, and, um, you know, certainly if you, if you look at the fitness piece of that, there are some big players in that, but in the preventative health and wellness space, no one's sniffing what we're doing right now. And that is a, a real, um, barrier. That's a competitive barrier. Like if you want to come into this space, you're going to be dealing with a player that is scaled and spending millions of dollars on both technology and marketing that has huge support at the corporate headquarters. It's really learned how to do this really well. Um, those are all real things. Um, I will say that the problem with a lot of franchise systems is that they don't build the support they need. They don't invest in the marketing infrastructure, the data infrastructure. And, and that's why franchising um, is so regulated because there, there, there are bad right. actors that have been in the franchise space. There are bad franchise systems that tell people, well, you're going to go make a million dollars and, and they do nothing to support that. Yeah, there's, there's nothing, nothing in the right, right in the 90s. Yeah, transparent, yeah. transparency is part of the ethos of Restore. It's not yeah, yeah. just with our franchise partners. It's also with our customers. Um, we think that's been a big issue around health is that, you know, you typically go into a doctor's office in a private room, you sit there for 10 minutes, you hope that you have a couple of minutes to talk to the doctor. There's not a lot of education around things. Once again, I am not knocking doctors either, by the way, they have a hard, hard, hard job the way sure, the sure. is set up and all of that sort of thing. So they're doing the best they can. And and we, we think we're complementary to traditional medicine, not not replacing traditional medicine. But we can well, replace a lot of the pharmaceuticals, though. Yeah, I feel definitely. like there should be a, a mandate. You want to talk about regulation. Like You're not allowed to take one of these multicolored pills until you, I actually get you into the health club for eight weeks, and yeah, I get yeah. you into a restaurant for eight weeks, and then let's see what your needs are that, that, in that, real that, life, not like yeah, yeah. This, these people wearing these cashmere sweaters that are 40 pounds yeah, yeah. overweight, and now they're on like a recurring revenue stream with the you know 90% margin with Pfizer. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the nice I thing about that is, you know, Jim. Jim. <laughs> Listen, there's, there's a whole bunch to unpack there and there's a whole bunch I could say on that. I could I could do a three hour sort of monologue on on sort of what I think of certain parts of the traditional health system and why I think they need to be improved and could be improved. But but, you know, I, I also am quick to say there's some good things that come out of the pharmaceutical industry, traditional medicine. But the idea oh, that sure, sure. don't prioritize preventative health and wellness is nonsensical to me. Like it's yeah, so yeah. much easier to keep someone healthy than it is to fix them once they're sick. Once yeah, you're yeah. sick, you, you get your options go down significantly and they aren't that great. Um, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Well, well uh, uh, as you as know, you since we met at the Press, press with, with uh, uh, Halo Conference, we use our term Halo Health, health Active Lifestyle Outdoors. Lifestyle outdoors. Preventative, Preventative Health, health and wellness, wellness is a big, big portion of what we do. We do. Um, um, we're not we're a huge fan of the word wellness, but we want you to take that mantle and own that part of the Halo category for us. And make sure that everyone's getting in, getting the treatments they need. We're going to solve obesity, diabetes, and loneliness. And I think what you're on to is probably a big, big you know, you know, component, component of making, making that happen, happen making, making it accessible, and it's not, not, you know, you know to the top, top percent of the population that are, that are doing Iron Man. man. Uh, uh, it, it really is, is you know, you know you've you got to set up a model, model to, make to make it accessible, accessible because I've been, been in several, several of the restores. restores so. So, so I and, know and that's by design. You're right about the word wellness. Wellness has got a lot. It's a loaded word. That is why we've created this category called hyper wellness. We wanted to take the best of wellness and add a layer on top of it to take it to a different, better place. And it is very, very important for us to be affordable and accessible for everyone. We have some of the richest, highest level pro athletes in the world come to restore. That is not what we're building our business on. We happen mm -hmm. to have a business that, that they appreciate and come into. I'm, I'm much more proud of the fact that a school teacher, a fireman, you know, someone that, by the way, if they get sick or hurt and can't go to work, like they don't have the ability to, to sit back and say, well, no big deal. I got plenty of money. So, so right, I, right, I right. the fact that we are making this affordable and accessible for, for everyone. Awesome. All right, man. Well, I'm glad we met in person. 
I'm glad we did this podcast. We're a big fan of what you guys are doing, and I uh, hope to continue to help you wave the flag uh, because it is important. And uh, a lot of our operators that are in the Halo sector, like, don't let this pass and say, I should have, could have, would have done something with Restore or I could have had some kind of partnership or even co-op marketing because if we keep people healthy, they're going to stay in your club. If you're only the Restore in your, in your town, well, now you're the authority on, on two big parts of the – what the community needs. So good work, man. In a short, relatively short period of time. I love that you have 200 employees at, at the franchise or level. And, uh, you know, kudos to you for getting general Atlantic. They, uh, they have a pretty tight lens on, on what a quality business is. And, and you obviously made the cut. So congrats to you and your uh, partner. Thank you, for, thank, thank you for, for all the kind words. words. It's, it's been a pleasure, pleasure um, talking, talking to you. It was, it was a pleasure, pleasure meeting, you meeting you in person. person. Hope, Hope to see you at a restore, restore, restore near you. you. Awesome. All right, get some higher dose products in there if we can get a partnership done because that's our, our largest uh, uh, individual investment, and we love what they're doing. But uh, I saw Katie and Lauren the other day. They're badass women, that's for sure. The badass women is right. Yeah, that's right. That should be our venture fund. Just invest in badass women and just you know get some realized returns out of it. Awesome.